Hi, Jim from Realtruth.net. This is part two of lesson six, Yahweh on Sinai. And lesson one, we went through four basic fundamental truths. You can go back to that and listen. But now we're going to uh, we're going to concentrate on coming to grips on the two Yahwehs that are in the scriptures and um, and explain what it means when it says that Yahweh is coming to the earth that Yahweh is going to set foot on the Mount of Olives and when we know Yahweh is the one sitting on the throne he is the one that gave the revelation to Yeshua. Yeshua is the one that is coming to the earth, as we are told in the New Covenant. So how do we reconcile in our hearts and in our minds? How do we, how do we reconcile this in our hearts and my, minds <clears throat> when it says that Yahweh is coming to the Mount of Olives? Got to lay down some more facts, I guess, is what we're doing here, right? In Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, the revelation of Yeshua, the Messiah, which Yahweh gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. How can anyone ever possibly make Yeshua a Elohim or part the Elohim? How can you possibly do that when he didn't even know this? It was given unto him by Yahweh. Yeshua received the revelation from Yahweh. He didn't have it himself. If he is the omnipotent, almighty God, why did he have to receive her from Yahweh? You see, it don't work. Folks, it doesn't work. Yeshua is the son of Yahweh. And what we see in the world today is a trinity, modalism, and other doctrines that try to explain these fundamental facts. But these are just men's imaginations that have no scripture to back them up. <clears throat> and that's why I can't even get my family to even talk to me about it because they believe things that are not scriptural and they have no backing scriptural backing for the things that they do and believe period they don't have it that's why they cannot sit down and have a conversation with me and that's why most people won't they get mad and scream and run away so how do we reconcile this in our hearts and minds this is reconciled when we actually believe Yeshua do we actually believe Yeshua? That's really the question. Just as in the Tanakh, when a messenger or an angel came to the men of old, it was just the same as if Yahweh was right there saying it. And as a matter of fact, if you remember from the last lesson, hey, if you didn't believe the angel, if you disobeyed the angel, you weren't going to be forgiven. You you were immediately cast into hellfire. There was no redemption. There's no salvation. You cannot be forgiven. Just the same. And that's what uh, Yeshua said in the when he was talking. Right? He says, "Hey, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It's unforgivable." Isn't it amazing? Yahweh will take the brunt and he'll forgive you. Yeshua 
will take the brunt. He took the, the beating and the hanging on the cross. He will forgive you. But you know who will not forgive you? And you know how you can make sure that your soul is cast into hell with no hope whatsoever? You disobey the angel. You disobey the Holy Spirit. And why was that? Because Yahweh, his name was in the angel. Get it? The angel brought the message. He knows who Yahweh is. Yeshua knew who Yahweh was. The Holy Spirit is the power of Yahweh. And, and so you blaspheme the power of Yahweh, ain't forgiven. You disobeyed the angel, you weren't forgiven. Can't find it. It's not going to happen for you. So when the angel came, as in the old, the same as if Yahweh is right there saying it or performing it. Because Yahweh is in control of all things created. He is the power, the creator, the highest of all Elohim because he created the other Elohim. He created Yeshua. He created you and me, the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. Oh, I know. Go berserk because I said he created Yeshua because that that breaks down your idol, the the false god you've made. But the scripture says he created him. So when the scripture says he is coming to the Mount of Olives, he is. But it will be his representative, Yeshua, as he has given the authority, rule, and kingship to him. And that is why Yeshua said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Because everything he did was given unto him of the Father. When one comes to the reality of this fact, it becomes very simple and easy to reconcile the scriptures. <clears throat> when Yeshua asked Paul, Peter, who he was, Yeshua said, you're the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim, or of Yahweh. No if, and, or but, simply the Messiah, the son of the living Elohim. If Yahweh has not revealed that to a person, then I feel that person is lost and is not known of Yahweh. Because it says Yahweh draws them, Yahweh reveals them. That's what Yeshua said. My Father reveals it. My Father draws you. Yahweh, the same Yahweh shown throughout Scripture, is the one sitting on the throne. There is no other. And that was what I asked. I asked my family, who is Yahweh? And they can't answer. They will not answer because they believe non-scriptural doctrine. They have no answer. And if you are sitting out there here listening to this and you have no biblical answer, if it's all some men's writings or some men's books, then Yahweh hasn't revealed himself to you yet. When a man professes Trinity, modalism, or any other doctrine contrary to this, they have not been called of Yahweh, period. It's just religion. It's just the Satan's spirits coming to you. I'm sorry, but that is the truth. Now, when a man makes a statement like this, and this came from someone, when I asked them, well, who, who was Yahweh? What, who is the, the, if you want to use the term God, or who is that? 
And his the answer was, so much depends on how you see the Father. Huh? Okay. And how you see the Son. Huh? Okay. I believe it is an unknown name. Well, I believe there is an unknown name. Okay, I mean, we were told his name is Yahweh. And a consuming fire which no man can see, which is an infinite Yah. Um, okay, yet Yahshua sits on the throne in heaven at the right hand. Not an easy answer to be sure. Huh? A, it, it's a man's made up belief with no scriptural basis because he does not know Yahweh that is the true Elohim. Give me a break with an answer like this. This guy's got three PhDs. He's the smartest guy I know when it comes to translating scripture and going through this stuff. And yet, it hasn't been revealed to him. He doesn't get it. He hasn't seen it yet. And it's sad for me. It's really, really sad. I, I don't know how men can do this. Yeshua said, uh, for that we can know the Father. If we, How can... This is confessing that you do not know him. The confession here is, I don't know him. When we can know him. I know this is a repeat here, but Matthew 16, 16, when Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living Elohim, Yahweh. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. How can the Father is Yahweh? How can we not understand that? Well, sadly, this particular person uh, went on to say, and he's put in his um, translated Bible that the name of Yeshua, uh, since that's his name, I don't quite get it, is Yahweh. Yahweh and Yeshua are the same. No, they're not. So if the God of Israel sent his son, then that means that Yeshua sent himself. Yeshua became himself. Yeshua spawned himself. See, the stuff is so absurd. I'm sorry, folks, I get a little bit <clears throat> riled up sometimes. 1 John 5.20 And we know that the Son of Yahweh is come and has given us an understanding. Has he given you an understanding? Do you have the understanding? And what is the answer that we may know? I gotta show you that we may know Yahweh that is true. <laughs> Does this say I know Yahweh that is true? Or does this say I believe it's an unknown name and a consuming fire which no one can see, which is an infinite that no one can understand? Yet Yeshua came to give us understanding that we may know Yahweh that is true. And we are in Yahweh that is true. Even in his son, Yeshua the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. What is the true Elohim? Yahweh that is true. Oh dear, oh my. Okay. Uh, in Enoch, chapter 1, we're getting on to the two Sinai's here. Uh, trust me, but the 
you got to understand these fundamental facts because if you don't, then you get confused just like this fellow up here did. Enoch 1 3. Upon their account I spoke and conversed with him, who will go forth from his habitation, the holy and mighty one, the Elohim Yahweh of the world, who will ear have hereafter tread upon Mount Sinai and appear with his host and be manifest in the strength of his power from heaven. All shall be afraid and the watchers shall be terrified. The watchers are the fallen angels. Great fear and trembling shall seize them even to the ends of the earth. The lofty mountains shall be troubled and the exalted hills depressed melted like a honeycomb in a flame, and the earth shall be immersed, and all things that are in it perish, while judgment shall come upon all, even upon all the righteous, and kind of indicating the flood here. Behold, he comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon them, and to destroy the wicked, and reprove all the carnal for everything which the sinful and ungodly have done and committed against him. Notice he's coming with 10,000 of his angels. These saints are his, the saints are angels. And then the Saint Charles, or Saint, the Charles version of Enoch 1, <clears throat> 3. There's two versions of Enoch, the Lawrence and the Charles. They're both good. I like Charles just because some of the wording is more to me, but neither here nor there. Somebody might like the Lawrence better. It doesn't make any difference. Anyhow, it reads, The Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal God, Yahweh, Elohim, will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai. You notice it uses that tread upon the earth. And appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heavens. <clears throat> and all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake. And great fear and trembling shall seize them unto the ends of the earth. And the mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before a flame. Behold, he comes with ten thousand of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all. And to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness which they have ungodly committed, and of all the hard things which the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. <clears throat> See, Enoch talked about him coming. All right, this is the precursor to something, and then. Obviously, we have another precursor, which we're going to show you here. What happened in the Exodus? What happened at Mount Sinai? What happened? Exodus 19.11 And behold, oh, I'm sorry, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people up on Mount Sinai. And in Exodus 24:16, And the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days and seven days. He called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. In Deuteronomy 33:2, And he said, Yahweh came down from, or came down to Sinai from Sinai and rose up from Sur unto them, and he shined forth from Mount Perm, and he came with ten thousands of saints, or his angels, from his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yes, he loved the people. All his saints are in it, your hand, and they sit at your feet, and everyone shall receive your words. Yahweh came to Mount Sinai. He spoke 
the law, the fiery law, the Ten Commandments, which included the seventh day Sabbath, not an abominable first day worship. He included the seventh day Sabbath. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 9 6. <clears throat> you, even you, are Yahweh alone. You have made the heaven and the earth. I'm sorry, you have made the heaven and the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and all the things that are there in the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve them all, and the hosts of heaven worship thee. How can anyone not know who Yahweh is, who is sitting on the throne? You are Yahweh the Elohim, who did choose Abram and brought him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees and gave him the name of Abraham and found his heart faithful before thee and made a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Zeduites, Gerizites to give it, I say, to his seed and has performed your words for you are righteous. It's talking about Yahweh. He's performed his words. And I'm in verse 9, Nehemiah 9, 9 now. And did see the affliction of our father in Egypt, and heard their cry by the Red Sea, and shewed great signs and wonders upon Pharaoh, on all his servants, and on all the people of his land. For you knew that they dealt proudly against them. So did you give them a name as in this day. And you did divide the sea before him, for them, so that they went through the midst of the sea on dry land, and their persecutors you threw into the depths as a stone into mighty waters. Moreover, you led them in the day by a pillory cloud, <clears throat> and in the night by a pillar of fire to give them light in the way wherein they should go. And you came down also upon Mount Sinai and spake with them from heaven and gave them right judgments and true laws and good statutes and commandments. How can you not know who Yahweh is? The Elohim that sits up on the throne that came to Mount Sinai and gave right judgments and true laws and good statutes and commandments. <clears throat> and you want to destroy them and say they are no more. You think this creator of ours that changes not is going to change the definition of sin? Sing unto Elohim, I'm sorry, Psalm 68.4, Sing unto Elohim, sing praises to his name, exalt him that rides upon the plains. This word heavens is not there, and I should change it, but it's that rides upon the plain. By his name, Yah. <clears throat> And rejoice before him. And in rejoicing before him, he is the one that's riding upon the plains. That's the way he identifies himself. Um, and I, I needed to show this. And so I got here in the literal Hebrew sing unto Elohim, make melody to his name, make a highway in the plains for the writer. In Yah, his name, be joyous before him. And you can download this and you can, you can look at these, um, at the actual Hebrew. But I want to put a note here. There's nothing about a writer in the heavens in the Hebrew. <clears throat> and so, um, and some of the teaching out there as well, the writers in heaven is, it says he's Yah, and that's really Yeshua, and he's out. No, I'm sorry. Again, it's 
English translation. <clears throat> in Psalm um, 68, 5, a father of the fatherless, a judge of the widows, is Elohim in his holy habitation. Elohim sets the solid solidity solitary in families. In other words, he sets them up as families. He brings out those that are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in the dry land. <clears throat> o Elohim, when you went forth before your people when you did march through the wilderness the earth shook the heavens also dropped at the presence of Elohim even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of Elohim the Elohim of Israel and you could put Yahweh in there but it's not Yahweh. It was <clears throat> when this psalm was written, it was written about the Elohim of Israel. In 68, 16, <clears throat> why leap you, you high hills? This is the hill which Yahweh desires to dwell in. Yea, Yahweh will dwell in it forever. The chariots of Elohim are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Adonai is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. The Adonai, that word there, is the, uh, it's the Almighty Master that refers to Yahweh. That's another way of, <clears throat> in the Hebrew, for identifying him. It says, you have ascended on high and you have left, now I'm in 18, and this, now this is re referring to, oh, we'll just read it. You have ascended on high, you have let captivity captive, and you have received gifts of men, yea, for the rebellious also, that Yahweh might dwell among them. And it kind of switches here from from Yahweh being <clears throat> on the mountain to you have ascended on high. The literal Hebrew for that, and that's in here too. You ascend to heights. You capture captivity. You take gifts among mankind. And also for the stubborn to tabernacle with Yah the Elohim. And then verse 19, Blessed be the Adonai who daily loads us with benefits, even the Elohim, our salvation. And we saw that Yahweh was the salvation, right? <clears throat> he is the Savior. So, the did he physically walk down off his throne? He's a spirit. And he came to Mount Sinai. However you want to say that representation was. Remember, in times past, it was in diverse manners and different ways. Fiery bush, angels, word, men appeared as a man. All these different ways he manifested, he came and he talked to the people. And and again, the Sinai thing was prophesied in Enoch, was said that he was going to come and do that. And we saw that that was fulfilled. Now in Zechariah 14.3, <clears throat> Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations as he fought in the day of battle. <clears throat> and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east, towards the west, and there shall be a great valley, and half of the mountain shall move 
toward the north and half toward the south. I put that in the Hebrew in here for everyone to see it also because what I wanted to show is um, I just wanted you to be able to see it so you under so you could see that what it's really there. Um, and in Zechariah 14, 5, And ye shall flee to the mountain, to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like you have fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uriah, king of Judah. And Yahweh thy Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. Sounds like Yahweh is coming, all right? We've explained so much, but it sounds like he's coming. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. And it shall be one day which shall be known <clears throat> to Yahweh, not day nor night. And it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters will go out of Jerusalem, half of them towards the former sea, and half of them towards the hinder sea. In summer and winter it shall be, and Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Yahweh, and his name one. Now, how can this be? If you don't have the understanding if you don't have it firmly planted in your heart to understand that Yahweh is the creator he is the commander he is everything Yeshua is the Messiah Yeshua is who he speaks through at this time Yeshua is who has all authority power and judgment and rule Yeshua is doing absolutely nothing of himself. Everything he is doing is what Yahweh directs him to do and has him to do. And therefore, when Yeshua comes to Mount of Olives and the Mount of Olives splits when he returns, <laughs> Yahweh will once again be ruling this earth. Yahweh will be king over all the earth through his the king of David through Yeshua Messiah when the people of the earth come on the Feast of Tabernacles throughout the millennial reign to worship in Jerusalem. They will be coming to worship Yahweh. <coughs> they will also be worshiping the King of the earth, Yeshua. They will bow before him, but that worship will be for Yahweh through Yeshua Messiah. That is what is going to be taking place. That is why in Zechariah it says he comes with ten thousands of his saints. You know when Gideon, I think, was it Gideon? Or when Elisha showed, maybe it was Elisha showing Elijah, I don't know, I have to go look, I'm, uh, I'm I can't remember stuff real well like that. He said to Yahweh, he said, open his eyes so he can see your army. He didn't say that to Yeshua. He said that to Yahweh. He said that to the Elohim. And his the eyes were open and whoa, he saw the ten thousands of ten thousand angels in the army that was coming that was doing the battle. And that's why it says that he's coming to do battle as he did in the day of old. Because he's going to be battling uh, Satan's angels and 
all of that when he comes back and wiping them off they're going to be removed from the earth for a thousand years there there is nothing going to be here but men and Yahweh and when we say Yahweh it's going to be the his family <clears throat> because it's going to be Yeshua reigning and those in the first resurrection those that are been saved the rest are just men and that's going to prove their hearts are evil continually evil because at the end of the thousand years Satan is loosed and this will be another study but Satan is loosed and all the earth come against us in Jerusalem <clears throat> uh, but that's another study so Yahweh will be king over all the earth and there will be one Yahweh and his name one that's who will be there <coughs> Zechariah 14:10 and all the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimen south of Jerusalem and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin gates unto the place of the first gate unto the corner gate and to the tower of Israel unto the king's winepress and men shall dwell in it and there shall be no more utter destruction but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited <clears throat> and this is where we're getting at and this will be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem their flesh will consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth and it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem now obviously they're not all killed because there's some left right shall even go up from year to year to worship the king Yahweh of hosts to keep the feast of tabernacles so <clears throat> they ultimately are worshiping the Elohim of Israel the king of hosts Yahweh of hosts and you will see in Enoch <clears throat> and you can see in Daniel this Yahweh of hosts is the Elohim the one sitting on the throne the one that Yeshua is sitting beside okay so this is again just as in Enoch talking about him coming to Sinai again here we have a prophecy of him coming to the Mount of Olives again and just as it was smoke and fire on Sinai here it's Yeshua and us and it shall be that those who will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king <clears throat> Yahweh of hosts even upon them shall be no rain in that day there shall be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto Yahweh and the pots of Yahweh house house will be the bowls before the altar and <clears throat> again I'm, I hope I've explained this so you can understand that it is Yahweh that is doing everything it is Yahweh that created this earth it is Yahweh that is dealing with man it is Yahweh that does everything and right now he isn't really here the evil one is the God of this world right now controlling it we're coming into the era where they were going into the great tribulation and this great tribulation is because this whole earth is going to be a hundred percent given over to the evil one and he is going to grow to fruition and then uh, Yahweh is going to move is going to turn to Yeshua and say, and say okay now it's time do your thing see Yeshua doesn't even know yet he doesn't know when he's coming he's still waiting on the Creator to tell him when to go 
And yet, so many people don't even believe that. They went, oh, well, he knows too. No, no, he doesn't. The Bible tells us so. Of course, you got to believe your Bible to believe that. In Malachi 3.1, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the add-on master whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh of hosts. His messenger. Who's his messenger? The Messiah, Yeshua. But, but you, but who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. For I am Yahweh. I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Oh, praise our Father in heaven. Praise you, Yahweh, for not changing and being gracious unto us that we were not consumed, that we do have this right to salvation. And it is so, so important. You know, I this was, I'm sorry I'm going on here, but I just heard a, a really honest person saying, uh, last night that, well, anybody that says they have to keep the commandments is just deceiving themselves that they don't, that it's just not required. It's good to do, but it'll never keep you out. It's the free gift of being, what? We went over that in the other lessons. Folks, the message is Repent. Be converted by the law of God. 19. Psalm 19. The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. Let it convert you. Repent. Let Yeshua clean you up. So you can actually be like Adam before the fall. And go and sin no more. Live righteously. Obey the law of Yahweh. Keep his commandments. Turn your feet from the doctrines of men, from your church elders, from all those things that you've been indoctrinated with. Throw them down. Cast them to the ground. And turn to Yahweh who changes not, the one who created you from the dust. Turn to him that the blood of the Messiah, the Lamb of Yahweh, Yeshua, the one and only begotten beloved Son of Yahweh, can cleanse you of all your past sins. So you can go and sin no more. May Yahweh bless his word. And may his, make his light shine upon you. And I want to say give you peace. But no. Give you conviction. If you believe these words and if you live these. Then let him give you peace. If anything you believe is contrary to what you've heard here today, let it bring conviction and change your hearts so that you can live. It's not a joke. He is not joking. Fear him. Fear him. Fear him. Obey him. Well, I hope this blessing was a blessing to you. And as I, again, at the end of my lessons, I like to say, read your Bible. Read your Bible. 
I really need to change this and say, study your Bible. Study your Bible, people. You people, people read their Bible every day. But they never study it. They never hear it. They just read it. And when they read it, they read it with their church doctrine, their elder doctrine, their whatever doctrine, whatever mythology, whatever philosophy they have in their mind. That's how they read it. Throw away men's stuff, folks. Please throw away men's stuff. And listen to the word of Yahweh. May Yahweh bless his word. Thank you for listening.